What is up, everybody? Welcome to this Trainwreck Sports Podcast, where we are not here to play school. We're here to break down the Week 11 college football slate. Jake Micah, as always, joined by my brother, Alex Micah. First, we're going to get into it. It was the first week of the college football playoff bracket reveals. Um, Not a lot of surprises, I don't think. We'll we'll get the bracket up here. Uh, No, but I have an inherent issue with... I have an inherent issue with the way the bracket is revealed. And okay, what what you got? I I think it is dumb, like because I did my I did a prediction. Now we'll, we can look at my prediction based off of what they actually did, and it's pretty it's pretty similar. But I think it's stupid. They're like, oh, BYU is the nine in the ranking, but they're the four in the bracket. Just fucking put them at four. That's what I think is stupid. Yeah, I just they I, are I just they are going to be honest. most likely an, undefe- an undefeated Big Twelve champion. They're the four. Put them at the four. I just think it's dumb. And like Reese Davis having to explain that it's like, well, even though it's this, they're actually this. It's like, that's just stupid. Make Reese Davis' job easier. Why are we doing that? <laughs> I disagree with you because BYU is not the fourth best team in the country. So that's what they're, that's what they're saying. With How the do we know that? We don't know that. That's what they're telling us. They're the ones. Well, there's, the like, there's like what? Six undefeated teams left in the country. They're one of them. It, Mo, you're, now you're just arguing to argue about this though, because it, the committee gets to literally gets to decide. That's how that's what happens here. They yeah. choose the rankings. Yeah, the committee a bunch you of you don't get a choice. Ran- Thirteen random ass people. I don't. I, I, you're covered in hot today. I don't. I don't know I, what what the the issue is here. I think it's fine. Yeah, it's whatever. All right. What who, what do we got? Who the number one Oregon? That was my prediction. I was number correct. Oregon. Number two Georgia. Uh, number three, Miami. Number four, BYU. It's exactly what I said. Ohio State is the five, but in the actual ranking, they're like, what they're are they? Two. I have, yeah, bullshit. Um, Texas six. That was right. Seven, I said Penn State. Are they seven? Yep. Yeah, they're seven. I said Tennessee eight, which is correct. Indiana nine. I was cooking, honestly. Uh, Alabama ten. Which is, oh no, Notre Dame is ten. I didn't have Notre Dame in at all. I said fuck them. Yeah, well that was crazy. Um, so Bama is at. I had Bama at ten. Notre Dame is obviously ten. I had SMU in just to be fun. Uh, at the eleven, and then the Boise State the twelve. So I ten out of twelve. I did. I did pretty good. That's pretty. And good. my numbering, my numbering system just makes more sense because I did exactly what they should be and what they are in the bracket. It, it doesn't make more sense. It's really not hard to understand how they did the rankings. I, the I just, it's when they really started doing it, I was confused when they started doing it because I didn't realize that's how they were doing it. I thought they were doing it in my head how I did it. Because I was like, this makes sense. They were doing the four. Well, they should be ranked the four. To, it, was, it was pretty easy to pick up on it when the second it, team was a Big Ten team. Yes, but it's still dumb. I, I disagree. I, I think it's I think it's the way that – it should be. Those are the best teams in the country. It gives us more info on how they're going to be seated going forward and where they would be. Nevertheless. That's that's where I'm at with it. So, it's pretty um, much, isn't it? It's like pretty much what the AP poll is, isn't it? Uh, the only change is in the AP, Georgia is ahead of Ohio State. That's the yeah. major change. Which they should be. I disagree Honestly. with that, too. Well, so, yeah, it's the, it's the exact same except that. So, I don't know. Whatever. But I, I'll take that. 10 out of 12, I did pretty good. I take just don't it. respect Notre Dame. Well, they're going to win 11 games probably and make the playoffs. So, you're going to have to. Whatever. To Against who? Who? Scrubs. Yeah. Join a conference. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean that they're not going to make the They're going to have beaten uh, at least – a, One, a three two, a three loss three, Notre Dame team or a four, three loss four rank team? four ranked teams. That's better than some who, teams that are in these playoffs. Who are their four ranked? Who are their four ranked teams? They're beaten. Louisville, A and M, Navy. They've beaten, and they have Army left on the schedule. They're not going to beat Army. No, I don't know about that. But Na- I don't know. Is Navy Navy still ranked? They were. When Navy's they not ranked them. now. They were when they beat them. That's how you. That's yeah. how you do it. Right. I uh, yeah. Okay. Uh okay, so they're gonna be in a probable nine and three, maybe eight and four A and M team. Oh, they're gonna have beaten a Louisville team that's probably gonna be also be eight and four. 
you we're we're not gonna do this every week where you just discredit all eight and four teams. Eight and four is not bad. No, it's I know that. Team. Well, I'm not. I'm saying uh, a team that just played that doesn't have a conference and just played a bunch of random teams that are eight and four and beat them. Is it their, is it oh. their fault right now that SC and Florida State are under five hundred? No, maybe it's not their fault. <laughs> They've pretty much dominated in every game. The loss of Northern Illinois is obviously one of the worst losses on the schedule. But besides the uh, ten point win against A and M, seven point win against Louisville, they've had double digit wins every single other game. Yeah, they should they should join a conference, and I'll stop complaining about it. All right. Well, that's never going to happen. So, and they're one of the best twelve teams in the country. So they're where, right where they belong. Maybe that's that's Maybe. what I would say. They get they get smoked in the playoffs by Penn State. I'm sure. I'm sure Maybe. Penn State would smoke them. Maybe. The game will be 13 to 9 or something like that. No. Come on. Yes. Yes. Probably. What's Probably. The, I, I mean, we're, I mean, we're not even talking about Notre Dame this week, really. We're not that's not one of the games we're focusing on. But what's See, but you're defense? too you're too regimented here. Sometimes yeah. you just gotta let it let it I fall. know, I'll just think again. Well they they let twelve points a game, twelve point one points a game that's fourth in the country. That's nothing. Defense sucks. You're just wow. being disrespectful today for no reason. Uh, I just don't have. I have never respected Notre Dame because they aren't in a conference. All right. Well, they're which is which is kind of a, a be dumb playoff, statement so. because respecting like an Ohio State or a Penn State who beats up on the shitty teams in a conference, like Ohio State plays Purdue this week. Oh, they're playing Listen, Purdue. Like, what do you? But what? All right. See, I don't like these arguments from anybody because what do you want them to do? Like, they can, Ohio State's not. No, I know a schedule of like LSU. Michigan, Oregon, Penn. It's not no team is ever going to play that in a season. No, I understand. I'm just saying it's like it's a it's dumb for me to be like, oh, Notre Dame fucking sucks, and they're a fraud because they're not in a conference. But like conference teams play the shitty teams of their conference and whoop up on them, and we were like, oh well, they're in a conference, so it matters more. And I'm I'm yeah. subject to that right now. I'm literally saying it right now. But still, yeah. join a conference, you fucking losers. All right. Well, that that sure. Let's go with that. I'm never. I don't really get mad about teams in power conferences if their schedule breaks the right way because year to year, like they're not in a power yeah, conference. That's what I'm saying. I, but they, but their schedule. It's not like they're ever scheduling like nine MAC teams. Like they play six games against the ACC. They always play USC. They always play Stanford. They're playing power conference teams at least eight well, games of the year. Oh, well, Stan. Well, Stanford. Well, Stanford is Stanford, in the ACC well. Stanford's now. actually in the yeah. ACC now. Yeah, actually in the ACC. Yeah. So they're playing as many power conference teams as all these other teams are playing. The Indiana Hoosiers are nine and zero right now. They're out of conference was FIU, Western Illinois, and Charlotte. And their toughest team that they've played is Nebraska. Like, it's just who it's who falls in front of you. And that was a good. Yeah. Game. We thought that was going to be a good game. They were five and one Nebraska. Yeah, they Nebraska. We got tricked by we got tricked by Nebraska. But that's what I'm saying. Like sometimes the schedules just work out that way that you get an easy schedule yeah. for the year. Like and especially with 18 team conferences, we're gonna have gonna have some of those years. Like BYU right now is. I mean, they had Kansas State on there, but their their Big 12 schedule broke nice. That's the only ranked team they've had to play. They get Utah this week in the first Holy War uh, in the Big 12, and Utah is obviously <laughs> limping in. It's just the it's the the first holy war in the Big Twelve. It's just a funny phrase. <laughs> <laughs> the first holy war. Um, yeah, so, oh, I mean, it's just, it's just how it is. Arizona, Arizona was a good team when they played them. They they weren't ranked, but they weren't ranked. Arizona, yeah. What is Arizona's record on the year? I think they're five and three. Can't remember. Arizona is they're three and three. Three and oh, six. No, they 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 were good. bad team. Yeah. They beat up on Kansas State. That's that's holding a lot of weight for BYU this year. But that's why they're at nine because the schedule is rough. Yeah. Um. Let's yeah. get it. Let's get into and let's get into a team that they could see later in the season. The Colorado Buffaloes. Oh, okay. We're six with this and one. two. Right. Number twenty in the nation. Going to Texas Tech, who's coming off their biggest win of the season, upsetting Iowa State, which. We did say on this podcast to look out for last week. If you think we don't know ball for some reason, we were talking about Texas Tech and talking about games that could be upsets. That's the one we circled. We were like, hey, Tech scores. Iowa's not going to go undefeated this year. 
Tech is six and three. This is a good team. They're not ranked, obviously, right now. Um, they've had some tough losses this year. Got blown out by Baylor and Washington State. Lost a close game to TCU. But then they get a win last week. They can they can score. Man, they're 20, mm-hmm. 20th in the nation for points for 119th points against. So this is a perfect matchup. This is a game that falls right into Colorado's lap. It's a tougher environment because it's a road game for Colorado. But I, Colorado has shown a lot of uh, – a lot of composure in these environments this year, honestly, um, and have won. They've they've won at least on the road at UCF in a game that everybody thought was going to be tricky. There, UCF's not a great team, obviously, but this year Arizona they destroyed on the road. We were just talking about Arizona is not great, but they've handled their business when they needed to. Except that Nebraska game at the beginning of the year, um, and those first two games for Colorado, you honestly look at it, they're kind of a different team from the the rest of the season in those first two games. They've looked like a, they've looked more complete, like they kind of found their identity. Um, the line has kind of figured out a little bit more how to get protect Shador, and that's helped them a lot. They're eighth in the nation in passing yards right now. Per game. Yeah, Shador yeah. is Shador has been awesome. And Shador if, is have, yeah, he's probably the Big Twelve offensive player of the, of the year, I would think. And, like at at this point of the season. And Travis Hunter is going to be in New York for the Heisman ceremony, whether he yes. wins or not. I don't know, but he. Will well, be there. that's. I wanted to have a discussion with that with about that with you. Um, okay. So Travis Hunter, he's got like third in third in the Big Twelve in uh, yards, and the third in the, yeah third in the Big Twelve with yards, fourth for catches, second most touchdowns. He's got the most pass deflections in the Big Twelve with seven. Um, and he's got two picks on the season, which is. It's like tied for like eleven in the Big Twelve. It's not that's nothing spectacular, um, but you could argue people aren't thrown throwing his way because he's such a good corner. I don't think that he is doing an, enough on both sides of the ball to win the Heisman. And obviously, as crazy as that sounds, because like we've people want to be like, oh, you know, Charles Woodson played offense. It's like he played like forty offensive snaps in a season when he won the Heisman. It wasn't like he was no one who's doing what Travis Hunter's done, where he's played both sides of the ball. But I still think you need that output to be considered considered the guy. And right now, I think I still still think if it's at the season end that Ashton Gianti, if he sets all these rushing records and he, he breaks them all, that all the Barry Sanders rushing records, that he's the guy for the Heisman. I don't think it's Cam Ward. We've seen a lot of good quarterbacks and put up numbers. Cam Ward isn't shattering any of these records. He's not beating Joe Burrow's touchdown, you know, pass record or his yards, or is as good of a dual threat quarterback as Jaden Daniels was last year. So I don't I, – Cam Ward might be a finalist, but I don't think he should be in that conversation. I think it's a two-horse race between Travis Hunter and Ash Gianti. And if Gianti gets to over that 2,000-yard mark past – I don't know the exact number for Barry Sanders, but if he gets past that mark, I think it's his Heisman. And Hunter gets, you know, first-team All-American, unanimous. He'll win the Paul Horning Award again for most versatile player in college football. And, I mean, probably he probably might end up with, like, the defensive player of the year in the Big 12 also. But – I don't know. I just, I don't think he is as like, a, and we had this conversation before. I don't think he's an elite enough corner in college football that he should be get warranted as like, oh, winning the Heisman. Uh, I, I think he's, I, I think it's clear that he's the best player in college football though. And I think that if you watch the games and see the impact he has on both sides, he's not a shutdown corner. Like, like a, one of the like top corners in the nation. No, I wouldn't say that, but he does. He is one of the best corners in the country. And he is, he's going to have, he has almost he has 757 yards and eight touchdowns right now. So he could end up with 12 touchdowns, 1300 yards receiving while playing 50 snaps defensively. I don't know, man. And, and, and not being a liability and being above average at the very least. And, and on a good day, great. I don't know. It's tough. It's tough because I think you just watch him and you're like, that's clearly the best, most dynamic athlete and player in football. Now, if Gianti does get all past all these things, he will get more consideration. But you also have to consider who, if you're at, not besides not talking about case for winning the Heisman, but the narrative behind the Heisman, Hunter is getting, Hunter is going to get all the favoritism over a Boise State running back, no matter what. Like the Colorado guy is going to get the love at this point, too. So you have to remember, you have to grade this on a curve a little bit. And right now, we're not even talking about one of the guys who's actually ahead of John T in the odds, according to FanDuel. Uh, tied, for, Gabriel, yeah. 
yeah, yeah. Dylan Gabriel is is plus 350. Travis Hunter and Cam Ward are tied at plus 185. John T is plus 500. And then it drops to 20 to 1 for Curtis Rourke and uh, Jackson Dart um, there. And then Shador is at 45 to 1. So they're obviously giving, it's only going to be Hunter here. But Hunter is, you know, tied for being the favorite in this award. And I think if they keep winning, if they're 10 and 2 or 9 and 3 by the end of the year, I think it's I think it's hunters to lose, honestly. But I get your case I mean, for Jonti. I just think that's I think that's where it'll end up. I, I mean, it's yeah. I mean, obviously, I think those I think those four guys right now are locked to be in New York for the ceremony. Um, Dylan Gabriel is I think mean, he's having a really good season. He's super like he's super productive in the number one team in the country, and he's a big reason for that. Um, his him being a finalist though is kind of similar to me when Stetson Bennett was a finalist a few years ago. Um, and it was kind of because they're just like the best team in the country, or at least I like you. Know, they're the undefeated team. That's why. That's why he's gonna be a finalist. That's how Dylan Gabriel feels to me. I think he's a better player than Seth Bennett, but um, I don't. I don't know, man. I just. I don't know. I want to see a running back win it. Obviously, it'd be, honestly, it'd be really obviously cool if a wide receiver corner wins it. Um, that I mean, that's happened in the past, but uh. I mean, a running back's won it in the past, too. Yeah, but, I mean, it's been so long since – we we saw a wide receiver win it four years ago. Yeah, but a running back different. hasn't, this, a running back hasn't won different. since 2015. This is different than just a wide receiver, though. Like, he is at be- his best wide receiver, but the what he does on the field defensively, too. I don't know, man. I never man. saw Devontae Smith play corner. He might have been good, too. I don't know about Too's that. Bad. I think he was out there. I don't know. Um, Let's talk about this game just in the – context of the big 12 race as we know we talked about earlier byu is undefeated they don't have a hard schedule they look like they're going to cruise on their way um i don't know what the tiebreakers are with the tiebreakers we're gonna have to figure those out as it comes down to the season but colorado and iowa state do not play each other right now iowa state is technically ahead of colorado um i'm assuming it's like a a strength of overall record is going to be the first tiebreaker that's been what a lot of the things is so as of right now, if they both, you know, ran ran the table, um, they would it would be probably be Iowa State BYU in the Big Twelve title game. Yeah. Iowa State does have to play Kansas State in the last week of the season. So if Kansas State did upset them and Colorado wins out, which Colorado has a pretty besides this tech game, then they play Utah, Kansas, and Oklahoma State. They have a good path if they get through this this game to get to ten and two. And if Iowa State lost to Kansas State, I think that it would be Colorado and BYU then. I think they would they would end up getting the tiebreaker over those teams um and getting in. So I yeah, I could definitely could see it. It's um I mean it, it's, it's crazy. It's man. It helps that the, I mean, obviously big thing that they're ranked this week. Um yeah, just need to see, I mean, you need to win out and you need to see Iowa State drop one in front of you. Um I mean, I was, that's I was, that would play a big thing in it too. If if because that gives you an extra week, you add a to those stats for those highs and yeah. too. So if they can get to that conference championship game, and then honestly, then it would be the full narrative push behind Colorado, behind Dion, behind Schroeder, behind Travis Hunter for going towards that for going towards that Heisman like we were talking about. If they're ten, yep. and, if they're eleven and two, they won the Big Twelve, and then are going to the playoff. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Then it's then it's a wrap. But I don't know. it sh- it I'm, should be a should be a good game. I, I put them in here because I'm very. I think if they win this game, that that train starts going. Where we're talking about people are talking about every week, like Colorado. Watch they get through. Yeah, playoff team. You know, and it's an offense that no one in the country wants to see. Travis Hunter and Shadur Sanders in a one game scenario. I mean, that's that's no, a hell that's of, hell that's the thing about so, Shadur. Shadur isn't like coming into the season. Obviously, people talked about him as like for a Heisman candidate because it was like just his skill on offense, and he hasn't put up like insane numbers at all. But there's at least one or two plays a game where you watch him, and it's like there's like, I mean, besides maybe like Cam Ward, like in college football right now, like no one else can make that play. Like some yeah. of his throws that he makes are so absurd, yeah. and he just like it, Shador is going to be losing with talent. I'm I'm fairly I'm gonna say very safely that Shadur is gonna be an amazing NFL quarterback. I feel pretty strongly about that. I on a and coming into this season where there was like talking about gushing about so much NFL like 
quarterback talent. It's what it's like him, and then I guess Cam Ward. And I don't know if Cam Ward's gonna be good in the NFL. Like, Cam Ward's really, gonna have like, to sit yeah, for a year it, for sure. I mean, yeah, I, I gotta, you gotta, yours, is, yours is still a great quarterback prospect. Don't don't forget about Quinn. He's got. I think he's got to do like a George Love situation. I think he's got to sit three years. Honestly. Oh, I don't know. I don't think he has to sit three years. I I I think he does. I don't. I don't think that guy could come into the NFL right now and be a good, even like a nine and eight quarterback. I don't. I really don't think so. And That's Carson crazy. Beck, Carson Beck completely has fallen apart. Well, Beck's not, like yeah, Beck. Like Beck's is he not. even like a second round quarterback? Like I, I'm maybe. Well, but, let's get into. It's a perfect segue because the Bulldogs are in danger this Saturday. I think. I think that yeah. I think Georgia, that number three team in the country, it, it, they're going into Ole Miss, a team that is playing for their playoff lives. Like if they lose, their, if they lose this game, especially with that game going on later that night, um, being a team who probably win and is going to have a nice road into the playoff. Ole Miss needs this. That place is going to be rocking. We've been looking to this game all season, and Carson Beck has been horrible for weeks and weeks and weeks. Yes. And there has it's it's I don't know what it is, it's a confidence thing. He's just not seeing anything. He doesn't have you know elite weapons on the outside anymore. They still have good weapons, and he should a quarterback should be able to do it. Um, their defense, Georgia's defense, is outstanding. Like this is a classic Kurt Georgia team right now, where they they just need the quarterback to kind of get by and not ruin things for them. A la Stetson Bennett, don't make negative plays and let this defense dominate, and they'll be fine. But they've had issues with that in the last four weeks. He's been he's been rough. Out, but even going back to the Bama game, honestly, and, and Kentucky since the SEC play started. But they've won four weeks in a row, all by double digit margins. The thing is, now you get at Ole Miss hosting Tennessee back to back weeks, and even that game, they get UMass the second week end of the season, whatever. Um, and then even the Georgia Tech game, I think, is tricky because Georgia Tech is a solid team, not a great team, but rivalry game you never know there's three mm-hmm. there's three real games left this is the toughest one because it's on the road but i i don't feel good about this georgia team at number three in the country with the way beck's playing in this game and if there was a spot where i was going to pick an upset the line scares me because it's basically it's begging you it, it does scare me because it is kind of begging you to take georgia like take take three points two and a half points and then and so it's like it feels really good just like picking Ole Miss in this game with the way Vegas is trending everything else but that defense could just destroy Jackson Dart's day he throws a couple picks gets sacked five times gets pressured all day and you know Georgia wins 17 to 13 and and then we're and then they're cruising on to a home game against Tennessee that's very possible too um so we'll see but it's it's going to be oof. It's going to be. I don't know. It's. I can't wait to see this. I mean, I don't know. Ole Miss's offense is ridiculous. And Jackson Dart, I mean, is playing as. I mean, he's playing out of his mind. I mean, he threw for 515 yards and six touchdowns last week. Mm -hmm. And, I mean, that defense let up 31 points, but it didn't matter because you scored 63. I mean, I don't know. It's. I don't know. I, I I think Beck is just completely falling apart, and if they get behind in a game, I don't think they're going to be able to get back ahead. That's what I think it is, especially because Old Miss's defense sure. is good. It's a top ten defense in the country. Um, they have four, they have forty two sacks on the season. This is it's the uh, lead in the nation. Yeah. It's uh, I don't know. It's I I just think that the. Like even this like double digit win you want to talk about like these last couple weeks and they're on this four game win streak. If you watch that Florida game last week, they it, I mean they ended up blowing that game open in the fourth quarter, but it was not. It was way closer than that score showed, and that was with Florida having to go to their third string quarterback who transferred from Yale last year. Who I mean yeah. you know like cool story about that kid or whatever. Like played did his uh, workout tape on a torn ACL because the Yale doctors yeah. thought it was just a sprain. And then he, the Florida was like, well, "Well, come play for us." And then he found out from their doctors he tore his ACL. But um, I just like if if DJ Ladway plays in that whole game for Florida, we might be talking about Georgia as a two loss team, and they're not number three in the country at all right now. It's true, it's true. And I think just Ole Miss has you know kind of righted the ship after that loss to LSU. And 
I the playoff is an outside chance for them. It's they're I mean they're pretty low in the SEC right now. They're one, two, three, four, five, six. They're like seventh in the SEC because they're th- they have yeah, those but, two conference but, losses. But think about if they beat Georgia, George, they get ahead of Georgia this week, and Bama. If they won't Bama get ahead loses, of Georgia though, because they'll be four and two. Georgia's five and one in the SEC. Yeah. Okay, but th- so think if they win one more game, if they and then Ole Miss is ahead of them, they have the tiebreaker over them. That's what I'm saying. Like it, it, getting the getting the tiebreaker over Georgia would be huge for their SEC title chances because right now yeah. Georgia wins yeah. out, they're in. And the, the, after this, it's at Florida, which will be a tricky game, and then the Egg Bowl. Um, so Ole Miss as a favorite. Ole Miss gets by this their that SEC schedule, and let's get into it. So what, let, first, let's get our prediction because we can't talk about the SEC title picture right now. Which in the there's five one loss teams, it's going to get messy and it's going to kind of figure itself out as the season goes along. These teams play each other a lot, but what do you think is going to happen in this game? I'm going to go with Ole Miss because I just think they're a more uh, well rounded team, and I think Jackson like it, Jackson Dart is just playing much better football right now than Carson Beck is. Carson Beck has thrown three interceptions three times this year, and he's had four games of multiple picks, and I think this Ole Miss defense is just going to feed on him, and they'll be able to cash in in a way that the Florida offense couldn't last week. Yeah, I am I agree. I think, I think Ole Miss wins a game that's played in the 20s. I think it'll be like 24-20 Ole Miss, something like that. But I think that they turn over Carson Beck, get enough explosive plays, and, and get a win over Georgia. And then Georgia's season spent into a desperation mode against Tennessee next week at home. It's, it's 20, crazy. 28-15. Okay. So we're both picking the Georgia Bulldogs to go down this week. Uh, But to talk about this, the top of this SEC right now, Georgia right now going into the week five and one, A&M five and one, Tennessee four and one, Texas three and one, uh, LSU, who we're going to talk about here in just a second here, hosting the Alabama Crimson Tide. They're three and one. Um, Vanderbilt three and two, Ole Miss three and two, Bama three and two. That's the top of the SEC right now. And a lot of these teams still have games against each other. Obviously, we talked about the games this week. Bama, LSU, Ole Miss, Georgia, Georgia and Tennessee play each other next week. We still have Texas and A&M to play each other at the, at end, the end of the year Yep. Um, to, to figure that out. Vandy hanging around here is interesting because they get LSU and Tennessee at the end of the season. Um, they have an interesting game with South Carolina this week, but Vandy's not. Vandy's going to be a big part of this equation going into it um, later in the year. And then it's just we're going to figure out a lot. And the SEC could cannibalize itself a little bit, which is really exciting with the competition that it's been this year. It's been a really fun conference as we expected, but I don't think we expected it to be as close and to have as much parity as it's had. So here we go into this game now. Both teams sitting with two losses. LSU obviously having the nice uh, the advantage of losing that game to USC, so they're hanging hanging ahead in the SEC title picture. Having this game at home, I will say I just looked up our uh, Trainwreck Sports friend uh, friend of the programs here, Chris Trapasso, is a draft expert for CBS Sports. So I wanted to see how many quarterbacks got drafted here, Mo. Mm-hmm. And yeah, teams love their quarterbacks. So think about this when you hear this. Number two, number three, Cam Ward to the Saints. The second quarterback drafted he has here, Jalen Milrow to the Cleveland Browns. Jalen Milrow is oh. probably going to be a first round pick. Now, yeah, that sucks for Jalen Milrow to go to the Browns. Uh, yeah, but, I, I, he should be a first round pick, but oh, to the Browns, come on. But more to talk about Milrow. That, and, and number six, he had Shador Sanders going to the Raiders. Number seven, Garrett Nussmeyer to the New York Giants, and then our boy that we were just talking about, Quinn Ewers, oh. to the Rams at 16. So you would get to sit a year at least. That would be great. McVay and Ewers might be good together. But Nussmeyer and Milrow, according to our friend Chris Trapasso, this is from two days ago, two top 10 prospects in this game. We talked about how much we love Nussmeyer. At least I've talked about how much I love Nussmeyer and love that I've seen how he's grown throughout this year. He, Not the he's biggest, impressed me a lot this year. 
and I'm and I'm not the biggest Milrow fan, and I, I've 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 been critical of him throughout the last. No, couple and years. I see he this is the rough because you've been Ooh. in on Nussmeier earlier, and I've been in on Jalen Milrow for a long yeah. time all year. Well, I can't like, I can't deny guy. Milrow. I can't deny Milrow anymore. He's been yeah. he he's cleaned up the parts of his game that you would worry about. He he's not as erratic as a thrower as he used to be. He knows when to pick his spots, and he's still just so dynamic. Like he's just so he is. He has a certain uh um just athleticism and and shake that a lot of guys don't have but this bama team in the two tough games they played this year so far because i'm not counting missouri as a tough game they've lost and i mean or they beat georgia um, i shouldn't say that yeah i shouldn't say that they beat georgia but losing on the road they've lost the two tough games they've had this year at vanderbilt at tennessee and now they're at lsu I I just think I think the Tigers are I, I think they're just as good as this team. It's the same thing with the line in the Georgia game where they're begging you to take Bama here. And I really love LSU. I've loved this LSU team. Um, just love the way Nussmeyer's played so far this year. I, I think last week or a couple weeks ago against AM, was it last week? A couple weeks ago? A couple weeks ago, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Um, against a and yeah, they got, they got smacked in the mouth in that second half, especially it was a different quarterback who came in though and had, had a lot of success yeah, against Marcel them Reed. that yeah. they weren't prepared for. And then you yeah. saw what that A&M team did last week on the road. Like it was, it's a team that, I don't know. It was just, it, it's a weird game. You kind of gotta, you, you can't flush it down, but they have the margin for error in the sec where they could afford that game. So I feel really good about this LSU team coming in focus, locked in They are at home Saturday night in death Valley. And I think these teams are close enough that I'm, I'm willing to just take the home team and lean there and go with LSU. But this is the fact that this game with these both teams and these two losses, it's basically a playoff elimination game. This is what the 12 team playoff like. These are the types of games you love when you're talking about the 12 team playoff, because these are still two teams that if they make the field like you could convince yourself they're going to make a run for a natty if both if one of these teams gets in. But one of these teams is going to be left out after Saturday night. Yeah, um, I'm going Bama. <laughs> Honestly, wow. I, yeah, I'm going Bama. Um, this is—I mean, obviously, you're right. You're, everything you're saying is right. Both these teams could be making a run. Uh, I just think I don't know. I think Jalen Milrow is just a better quarterback. Obviously, he does like he doesn't have like the passing yards that Garrett Musfire does, but I think I just I think what Milrow can do in a game, especially in like a high like a high tension game like this, he always like shows up. Obviously, the Vanderbilt game is like a weird like misstep, and he like he didn't have his best time. Um, but like he played well in the Tennessee game. We've seen him have like clutch moments in the past couple of years. Um, if they can, I mean, if he can get ahead of it like he did um, in Georgia, and he was just, I mean, and play lights out. And I think the biggest X factor in this game is Ryan Williams, who I think is the best freshman in college football. And I know that's you could you could make an argument between him and Jeremiah Smith. I think Ryan Williams is better. Um, yeah, I, I would agree with that. And I so I mean he's gonna be the biggest X factor in this game, and I mean he is a, just like an absolute like absolute stud. I don't remember his exact number, but he's he has seven like seven touchdowns on this year, and like seven hundred fifty seven yards or eight hundred yards around that number. I want to say I okay. might be mixing that up with somebody else, but I I don't know. It's you. It's obviously a massive rivalry game, but we and we talked about this last week. We're like, what's the comparison? Because we sadly about Penn State and Ohio State. Where, where is it, you know, where do these teams like lock up together? And we figured out that in this world, it's LSU and Alabama and SEC is another rivalry like that where both teams consistently are ranked in like the top 10, top 15 and Alabama just wins every single time. Yeah. Obviously there's been a couple of 2019 was a different story, but that's like one of the greatest college football teams of all time. Beat that Alabama team. There's over like a dozen first round picks between those two teams. And then a couple years ago, that got that win in overtime. That was Brian Kelly's first year. But Alabama, even with a new coach, even under a new coach, I don't know. I think it's just those guys know what they have to do to win. There's players that have been there for the last couple of years. They know how it feels to lose to LSU because they were there, but they also know how to know that beat them because they beat them last year. And, I mean, obviously being in that Valley is a very tough situation, but I'm still going to go with Crimson Tide. What's your score? It's gonna be high scoring. It's gonna be thirty-eight, 
31. Okay. Yeah, I'm going. I'm going with LSU. I also think high scoring. I'll go. Uh, I'll go 30. Mm, I'll go 41, 38. I think it's. I think it's going to be a high scoring affair, though. Um, some other interesting matchups this weekend to watch out for Miami at Georgia tech. We were talking about that Georgia tech team. Miami's got, might get got at some point, Florida playing better traveling to Texas. That's just a fun matchup to see. Honestly, um, Florida and Texas in an sec game, the whiteout Washington traveling to Penn state on Peacock there. Obviously, yeah. It's pretty, kind of sad. It's on Peacock. But... There's nothing wrong with Peacock. People, people are hating on Peacock too much. Yeah. Great app. Great app. Michigan and Indiana. Yeah. Um, interesting game for the Hoosiers as they are nine and zero, and if they get past this one, we know what one's next in in a couple weeks in Columbus. That will be one of the biggest games of the season there. Um, and then that's that's really it of note. Oklahoma yeah. Missouri so, is kind of is an interesting game just for the fact that it's a renewed uh, old big rivalry eight. now, yeah, in big the, eight now early. being played in the SEC. And uh, and then we mentioned Holy War a little bit earlier, but another iteration. Yeah. So you on the road at Utah. I, you, you're not going to know the answer to this, but you see, you mentioned Florida, Texas. I was looking this up yes. earlier. Uh, when was the last time they played each other? You had to guess. 1984. Oh no, way oh. longer. 1961. Longer than that. 1949. <laughs> a little, little bit longer. 1929. <laughs> not that long. 1940. The Why? last time these two, I don't know. They just. The so first time they met That's was a tie, crazy. 1924. They played each other. It was a tie. Then they had a home and home, 1939, 1940. Texas won both games. That's the last time they played each other. That's weird. I, it is really. It I've is. Never I mean, played. It's. I don't. It's. I mean, it's fun to look at though with some of these teams that were like. Obviously, you talk about oh, renewing old rivalries, or it's like oh, they're in the they're in a conference, but they used to have home and homes with each other. Like we talk about Colorado, Texas Tech, they play each other, obviously both in the Big Twelve now for the you know first two years they've been here. They're five and five against each other all the time because they had back and forth against each other in the past for whatever well, reason. They also they were, were both in the Big Twelve at, for a, a little stretch of time, right? But it's just uh, it's interesting to see. Uh, yeah, the like, last game in, in in the last game it was in Gainesville in 1940, a 26 nothing Texas win on December 7th. Maybe uh maybe you know history's gonna not repeat itself because they're at Texas, but uh let's see. You covered the holy man. war. BYU has got a staggering uh decline in the in uh, the holy war. Utah is up 59 yeah. to 32 all time. That's tough. Yeah, that's tough. But Always that's tough. Always fun. Always fun. Rivalries, that's... especially rivalries that don't necessarily happen on rivalry week, are always a good time. Oh yeah. And maybe it's Florida Tech, a... maybe you know, renew an old rivalry. Not really that be... rivalry, but <laughs> get could be a start of it. All right. Yeah. Enjoy the Saturday slate. We'll be back next week to preview the biggest games of week twelve. For Alex Mike, this is Jake Micah. Have a great weekend, folks.